sampler actually, it's a, a Korg sampler. I was doing piano lessons at that age and uh, I, I found it very boring and they wanted me to continue uh, uh, you know, making music uh, so they gave me electronical stuff like that first uh, Korg sampler uh, just to keep me going with, with those things. And I think a few years later I, uh, I came across uh, techno vinyl stuff and then it became what it is now. In some way it's very perhaps a bit too natural or something to me uh, to, to, to work with a software like Ableton or something because I've worked for so many years with that software um, and instead of just trying new things you know and, and finding your way in them um, in a different way when you start with software again. A lot of fora on the internet and uh, there's, a, there's a huge Arduino culture, right? You know Arduino is the... Uh, a lot of these are based on the Arduino boards and that's an, uh, an open source board and there are a lot of people active on the internet trying to figure out things and explaining things on Fora and um, yeah that's where I got all the, the help from. I am very interested in smaller sounds in my music so you know just one doo -doo 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 -doo, a, a sound like that and uh, I think the way I try to place the, the knobs and leds and faders uh, on controllers uh, have some kind of relation but it's not a direct relation or something uh, it doesn't sound different because the knobs are placed in a different way but I just like you know the the, the, the shape of a circle or a, yeah a spiral or something much more than straight lines and I think that's what I tend to see when I hear um, stranger sounds like not not a really a straight snare every time but a, a bit more broken snare or uh, a granular stretched snare or something like that so I think that's the the, the correlation between the, those two the controllers and the sounds well at first I just thought it was great fun to do <laughs> To uh, you know, to, to mess with people's minds uh, for getting new names every time, and the names are very similar, of course. So the, the, the names I'm, uh, uh, I carry on doing right now are Felix Lemfrink and Fritz Wentink, but I have done um, uh, Frederick Eising as well. So I hope that people, you know, uh, see the line in all those kinds of names, and it helps me to produce with a different mindset. I really like making uh, more hard pumping uh, techno music, but I think the, uh, the, uh, the people who are now listening to Felix Lemfrink and Fritz Wentink aren't waiting for that, you know? So it's, it works better to, to get another, a different alias uh, for different kinds of music. Magmatic Knight booked me as Steve Mensing, so my live set was full of uh, Willening, Fritz Wentink, Urkel, and so I'm, it's a mixture of everything. It was a great experience. I was quite young at that time, and um, I got the opportunity to work at a very high level uh, with, with very uh, professional uh, performers. And um, yeah, it was really exciting, really hard work. Yeah. I don't think that it's a nice idea to bring techno to a theater or something, because it's, um, techno is really about a different experience, uh, you know, um, uh, harsh sounds and, and getting really drunk. Um, I, I don't think you should do that in a, in a theater kind of setting. There, there can always be nice crossovers, but I, I think the essence of the club music should stay there. I think people should do what they think is it works well, but it's not my kind of Thing, not my cup of tea really. I have worked a lot with a, with a singer called Luz Jongerling and it's really hard to 
make a proper live set, you know, to get people dancing, uh, but at the same time get uh, um, uh, elements like like a singer or maybe a guitarist um, in your live set. And um, I just don't think that it works well for me. Yeah, I think you can't right now. You can't really just make music unless you're you're a big name, of course. But you need to get to that stage by, you know, managing uh, yourself. Uh, you know, um, like like you said, uh, the word communication. Um, I don't think it's a particularly bad thing, but it tends to get your head away from the things you really wanted to do when you started making music, yeah. I do think in the Netherlands it's getting uh, more and more organized and sometimes a bit too organized. And um, yeah, that's a pity I think. It's getting safer as well, you know. Um, yeah, things are getting safer and a cool thing when you're young and you discover clubs and, and loud music is that you want to uh, push things further, you know? And I think that's um, getting very limited by all the rules and regulations um, that are proposed right now.